The promises have been made and broken and made and broken, and how do you believe them anymore? I was devastated, you know, and this is affecting a lot of people, not just me, this is affecting a lot of families. One and only train that served this, this area. It feels like in, in this country we're, you know, we're neglected, we're taken for granted. Ten years ago, the Ontario government got rid of the Northlander. That was the train that connected the north of the province to the south. Now at the time, it was a blow, particularly to the people who live up north. Now fast forward ten years later, we're in the middle of the Ontario election campaign, and all of the parties have pledged to bring the train back. You've got to wonder what that promise means to the people of northern Ontario. My first stop is in North Bay, where I meet Judy Jones. She blames the cancellation of the train for what happened to her family. It was a nasty, snowy day. And my daughter and her family were on their way down to visit us during family day. And they were in a bad car accident. You know, I think it would have been a lot safer for my daughter and my grandchildren to get on a train. The roads are not maintained like they should be during the winter time. Judy's family was piled into a single vehicle on that eight hour drive from the northern part of the province. They never made it to North Bay. They were hit from behind from a truck driver and then it drove them into oncoming traffic and hit by another truck in the oncoming traffic. The car was totaled and my daughter broke her neck, the second and third vertebrae. My daughter, of course, seeing that the children had blood and there was, they were screaming and her son was just a few months old, her natural reaction was to protect her children when she really shouldn't have even moved. In the end, everybody survived, but even today, two years after the accident, Judy's daughter is still recovering. So this is very personal for you? Absolutely. I almost lost my family. And that was very heartbreaking. And I don't know that my daughter will ever fully recover. They've already told her she'll never go back to nursing. As for the promises from the politicians, that they'll bring back the train? Here's what Judy thinks when she hears those. I get angry because I don't believe that they're going to come through with their promises. It makes us feel like, why should we even vote? That feeling of powerlessness has been around in the North for some time. It was definitely here 10 years ago when the Northlander train made its final journey before being shut down. I know because I was there on the platform in Cochrane, Ontario more than 700 kilometers north of where the decision to cancel the train was made. It's another way of marginalizing the people in the north, saying you don't really matter. You can take the bus, you know, go ahead, take the bus, little people. On the journey itself, I learned how much the train meant to people and how proud they were. I rode for a few kilometers with the conductor, Wayne Kevlon, who'd been driving the Northlander for more than 25 years. It feels like we're not part of the same province. That's what it feels like. It feels like uh, we're, we're not we're not getting our fair share of uh, services uh, for the taxes that, that people in Northern Ontario pay or, and deserve. It feels like I'm losing a part of myself. It's remarkable that 10 years later, 10 years without the train, people here still care about it. When you look down there at those tracks, what do you think about? Home. My, uh, growing up, I mean, my parents' uh, backyard was right on this rail line, so, um, you know, I just, I remember as a kid just seeing the, the trains go back and forth. Just reminds me of home. That's Eric Boutillier. Right after the government got rid of the train, he started to fight to bring it back. On his website, Northern Tracks, he looks at the discrepancy between transportation options in the north and the south. We're asking for one train here. I took the time to calculate how many GO trains and VIA trains go through Union Station. You're talking about a, a couple hundred each day. It's insulting. We're not asking for the world here. I, I don't believe in, in a, a civilized country like Canada that this is asking too much. Eric shows me why he thinks there's no reason the train shouldn't run today. Yeah, so this is the, the train station where the, both the buses and the trains used to meet. And, uh, you know, the, the facility's still, still there, uh, you know, the infrastructure's still in place. And he points out there still are trains going south. It's just they carry resources, not people. 
If we see the minerals and the, and the, and the timber that comes from uh, the, the ground here in Northern Ontario go south to generate wealth in, in Southern Ontario, it doesn't feel like we're getting a whole lot in return. I follow the tracks a little farther south until I meet someone who at 79 says she won't stop fighting until she can climb aboard the Northlander again. It's very simple. You don't give up on something that's good. I care about my neighbor. I care about others. Um, transportation is an essential need. Lucille Frith learned that the hard way when her husband got sick and they had to drive to Toronto for treatment every week. I've gone through the last year and a half with my husband having cancer treatment down at Princess Margaret in Toronto General. I now know what people who have to travel great distances by road have to go through so that they can survive. That experience means that Lucille fights for the train more strongly than ever. She's traveled up and down these tracks all over the north, drumming up support for the train. When you hear the promises of the politicians that they're going to bring the train back to Northern Ontario, what do you think? Keep your promise. That's what the people need. I'm getting older. And a lot of the people who need the train are getting older. I won't stop, no. I want to ride that train. I, I want to be able to say to people up north that they can get where they need to go, that they can stay connected to Canada. Nobody knows if after the election, the politicians will make good on their promise to bring the train back. But I wonder if they actually understand what the Northlander means to the people here. Nick Purden, CBC News, Huntsville, Ontario.